गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन बेसिकली वी आर हेयर टू डिस्कस अबाउट द यू आई टेस्टिंग यूजिंग रोबोट एंड सिलीनियम टू लाइब्रेरी सो करेंटली इन द लिथियम वर्जन वी डोंट हैव एनी टेस्ट डैट को शो डैट वेदर द डिलक्स इज अप एंड वी हैव द बैंक यू आई मॉड्यूल्स अप और नॉट सो दिस इज जस्ट टू क्रिएट टेस्ट यूजिंग रोबोट एंड सिलीनियम टू लाइब्रेरी uh to show first to check whether the topology is up or not or whether the wang ui modules are up or not and uh, so the agenda here is first i would be giving you an introduction what was the scope of the project what has been reached and how i started then we would be discussing with the features that the community wants to be tested and would like to see in the beryllium version right so after a uh, few minutes i just give you the introduction carol is going to lead and uh, so the introduction of this project so basically the first the scope of the project was first to test the netcoff actions that are being processed via mang ui but later on we thought that the community wants to test the deluxe api service as a whole so first we the goal of this project now is to create test suits that can test the user interface and the wang ui interface that are being exposed via deluxe service so it this test will ensure whether the deluxe is up or not so we have the test running in the jenkins so that we can whether the deluxe goes down or the url is not opening so that it can and we will process some modules so that the we can identify the developer can identify whether the deluxe service is up or not right. so this project is being mentored by carol and luis is also there in the discussions and everything so so basically sorry i forgot to mention my introduction i am working as an open elite intern with the linux foundation and my name is nitin agarwal so how i actually got started so first of all i went learned about what is sgn and what is software defined networking how what are the technologies then i learned about open daylight so the architecture of open daylight what is the controller what is north mount south mount the open flow protocol open vswitch and then i tried to get the vms from the community and then i tried to install open daylight controller and play around with it so after that we had uh, there some wiki pages which are a good reference point for the new beginners to come and see how to install the features troubleshoot the issues and there is a irc channel where we can actually ping any of the developer to ask the issues right so uh, i got three vms from the sparent labs where in first vm i installed the open daylight controller the configuration of the vm is something around four cores and 8 gb ram two of the vms are running centos and one vm is ubuntu 14 so on the centos vm i am running controller and the other centos vm i have robot framework and the my development setup to push pull and commit code and on the ubuntu vm i have mininet installed so after that learning about all these things and setting up the environment directly i uh, tested the present test case to become more familiar with the robot framework and how the testing procedure goes then we have got the selenium to library so i learned about this selenium to library and the various keywords that are been used so after that i got started creating with the test suits for testing the ui features and we have got one basic test suit just to test whether the delux shows on a specified url and the user is able to log in properly with admin admin so what is actually selenium to library it is a web testing framework for robot right and it uses selenium to web driver for internally to control a web browser so it actually runs in a real browser instance and uh, it can be used with both python and jython 
So this link is actually a good reference point for the Selenium 2 library, and it has all the it is a good resource, and all the parameters and keywords are mentioned, how to use it, how to import, everything. So first of all, Selenium 2 library, we installed it publicly in the Jenkins. So this is the way we have installed, and uh, in the Jenkins, built in Lang. So this is the user interface that I'm going to discuss. The UI opens at localhost. 8181 port and index.html. Please note that it has changed in lithium version. Uh, before in helium, it was slash deluxe slash index.html. So this slide is been pulled from the ODL operations guide, which Lewis gave on Monday. And that was actually a good reference point for the new beginners, and it has all the things that I did. So installing Mininet, robot code, and audio controller, troubleshooting the issues, Postman, RESTConf, and REST URLs. So this is that we want to test. So this is the UI actually, right? So we, after login, we would like to discuss with the community, say, which features you would like to test first Right, uh, so topology part, nodes part, Wang UI, and in lithium version, we also got the Wang visualizer part. So the basic test suite we have now is just, it shows that the deluxe service is up or not, and whether the user is able to log in properly or not. So after that, now we are uh, proceeding further to seek the community, um, uh, what features you would like to have first, and is there any priority among the features that you would like to test first? So I think now it's time to for the discussion, and Carol is going to lead the discussion and discuss with you regarding the features. So I request Carol to please come and lead the discussion. Thank you. Testing, okay. So thank you, Nitin, for your um, introduction and to the testing that we're starting to do with Deluxe. Um, show of hands, how many have loaded Deluxe, played with it, do you use it in testing at all? Good. What would you say um, is the first place you go with the most popular um, application you use? when you open Deluxe? Okay, topology, I heard Yang UI. No one's used a Yang visualizer yet though, right? That's still kind of, you have, okay. <laughs> that's, that's what we need to know, actually. So what would you like to see tested? I, I recommend it to Nitin that we maybe think about the, what I call low hanging fruit. So that's the, the user opens up Deluxe, what are they basically gonna do? What do they wanna see? They wanna see their nodes. They wanna see the connections between the two. They wanna be able to push configurations, right? Oh yeah, so, so one thing, um Obviously, well, one big thing I look at is the topology manager, seeing all my nodes and everything. Is there a way to test that the web UI actually goes in and calls, I'm assuming it makes a REST call to operational nodes and actually gets the nodes to verify that the number of nodes is actually what what is in my controller? Because, I mean, I've done a little bit of testing with Robot and Selenium too, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to test like the topology manager but I think one good way to test it is to verify that when we click Topology Manager, then it actually underlying, it calls a REST call or however it does to get those nodes. And it's the same as if we were to make a REST call um, 
without the UI or not through the UI to verify those numbers match of the, the number of nodes. So that uh, sounds like testing the rest, actually, and that's se that would be separate from seeing if it actually shows up in, in the UI. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, like what he said right now, all you guys do is test, make sure you can log in, and then are you guys testing that the title's there or the page is loaded? That's all, right? So how do we test that? My nodes, let's say I have five nodes, um, that I, I actually do have five nodes, and it, it's it's um, real, uh, the same as what I see on the, the, the mm -hmm. UI. Yeah, so I think we, to validate that, what we could do is we could do use Selenium to test that the nodes appear, and mm -hmm. you can do that with you know, IDs or an XPath statement uh -huh. to find them, and then to validate what we th what's there yeah. is to go and then do a REST call, an inventory, yeah. And then match will, the numbers. And yeah. match the, yeah. Yeah, and that's not done today though, right? No, it's not. Okay. It's, yeah. I just think that would be kind of useful too to validate the UI. Okay, validate. Topology yeah. manager at least. For topology manager. Yeah. Okay, that's a one for topology manager. <laughs> More exploration there. What about the Yang UI? I'm developing the Yang UI. <laughs> <laughs> You're developing, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would like to know how to test it because uh, we are generating the UI itself, so uh, we are developing the application. And what can we test there uh, if, the, if the form is uh, generated properly? Against what? Against the Yang UI model? and uh, we need to parse it mm -hmm. uh, or we, we, we can get the data from the Yang utils, which is a library to generate the data for Yang UI, uh, but it's uh, testing only the UI against the Yang utils library, which is in the Yang UI. So I don't know what we will test there uh, in the Yang UI itself. So just tell me and we will try, of course. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, one question, uh, the Selenium library is uh, getting the elements from the page by ID, right? We don't use IDs in yeah, <laughs> Yang yeah. UI, so we must to add them, which is not a problem, okay, we can, we can do. But uh, uh, we, need to, we, didn't, we need to ensure that the, that the elements have a unique ID, so we need to, we need to generate the IDs like the module name, revision name, uh, revision number, uh, name of the of the element itself, and this stuff. So uh, to ensure the the name, the ID is unique. But we will do that. It's not a problem. But uh, somebody tell me how to test the Yang UI itself against what S will be the main so question. So I, I wrote a preliminary test suite for the Yang UI, and what I used was XPath because there were no IDs. Yeah. And the other um, aspect of the Yang UI is that the elements don't show up until you actually click on them, so yeah. th they're not populated. So you have to write logic to actually wait until it shows up and then yeah, try yeah. to identify we, it through XPath. We, we, yeah. must to, we, have a, we have the Angular statement ng show there. Uh, so the elements are in the are generated, but are hide. So they are in the page, by are hided by the ng hide statement, <laughs> but they are in the in the HTML. But we had a problem with the uh, with the great Yang models if they, if they are too large. So the whole application just generate uh, a lot, just consumed a lot of memory, mm -hmm. and the browser just hang up and. Right. It's, yeah. It's it's still so uh, we must to change it from the ng show to ng if and uh, ng if just uh, don't generate the elements itself they just play place the place the placeholder okay and uh, when you click on the on the appropriate node and generate the subtree of the form uh, it just renders and put all the code uh, in it I would like to have uh, I would like to have this uh, functionality because you know if we have a uh, really really big uh, Yang models we we c 
can generate the whole form. It will be too big and will consume a lot of memory uh, of the browser. So uh, maybe we we try to try to test the placeholders. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know. <coughs> and this stuff. So it sounds like you know a lot about how it's going to change. You you say you're developing. The yeah. Okay. So maybe it might be worth it to get together and kind of of course, of yeah, course. Co you know, coordinate, maybe come up with a, a test plan because there may be an opportunity for some unit testing there as well. Yeah. So for me, yes. <laughs> the voting is maybe start with the other application than the NGUI, test it there with a something simpler, mm -hmm. simple, test it there uh, and uh, then if we know how to how to run it properly, mm -hmm. we will try NGUI. I would like to have NGUI tested, and I like to uh, learn the robot testing in Selenium because I need it in uh, other UIs we are developing. So I want it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Um, I just like to know the motivation behind developing Yang UI. What problem is it trying to solve? <laughs> I'm not not being mean or anything. I just really want to know. I'll let the developer answer that question, perhaps. But I, what I, from my experience with Yang UI, is it's a front end for making REST and NetConf to your southbound devices. I mean, it also. Are we talking about the same thing, the the tree? You, so Yang UI versus Yang Visualizer. Ah. There's there's two different applications. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yang UI I get. Does anyone know anything about Yang Visualizer? Yang Visualizer is different. Yeah, can we what does anyone know what the motivation and problem is trying to solve? I don't know. I'm I'm developing into Okay. <laughs> We are developing the Yang Visualizer too, and uh, it's. Thank you. <laughs> Yang Visualizer is just uh, for displaying the Yang models itself in a in a Sigma topology uh, JavaScript library. So if you want to know the Yang models or the appropriate Yang model, just start the Yang Visualizer and click through the model. It's displayed like a topology. So you have nodes there, and you see the connections between the nodes. You know what the what the you don't see this, but <laughs> you know what the what is the parent of the node and what the child of the node. You you see the here types of of the elements. So it's just uh, displaying in the in the li li in a topology like uh, yeah. You just see it as a graph, and uh, you you can understand it very quickly. So it's just for that. Uh, so is it no, no data, just models. You will not see what is uh, stored in the config, or, uh, just, the, just the representation of the, of the Yang model itself in a, as, a, as a graph or as a topology. So it's, yeah. it's only that. It's just a graphical represent, representation of the nodes you have connected or mounted to the controller. Or is the Yang models. The Yang models, okay. So you will see what is what is choice, what is uh, leaf, what is RPC, and uh, what is connected to what, what is parent to I don't know what is subtree and okay. all this stuff. Interesting. Okay. Got uh, up up front. Oh. For the visualization uh, for the Selenium, what I have done is that first thing I did the fill up the form. So that how I wanted to create my node and what are those nodes are done by the Selenium because it's easier to do that one. Once I have done that part, because you can create, you can type on it and you can record everything you want and sequence wise, and you have to know the flow first of all, that what your intention is and you run the three, four time of that one. After that, you can export that one as an Python script. In the Python script, you have to have the wave two to be in there so that when you run the manually, 
on that one. It will automatically launch that one. You log in and you will be done that one and then you go to the young module and then from young module then you go on through the, that process. But that is the fixed configuration for the testing part is that one. The difficult part of that one was the way when we try to populate and that bring up the another one based on that population, the another field in the form, sometimes it get messed up. So that part need to be, you know, quite a bit clear, one thing. And the second thing on the uh, uh, profile part, it is really hard to do that one. The reason is that it is always, always, always moving. Number one case, number two case, if I restart it, its ID will be different. So there is a way to make it the fixed configuration for the testing purpose. There's a fixed configuration ID on the node so that we can go and test that one. You're proposing that you know of a way to do that or you're asking? Yeah, I already know that okay. one, but the question is the topology portion is really hard to do with the selenium. So because of the ID number changes every time I restart it, or I, let's say I remove it, Right, I remove it on the open, del uh, sorry, on the dev stack, I remove some part because I'm running another one which is creating and populating to the ODL, right. okay, directly. But whenever I remove it and recreate it, it creates a different ID number on that, that one that goes yeah. into the ODL. And right. ODL sees that one as a separate number. But on the Selenium part of that one, it's really hard to do that one. So there's any way we can hack on it that will give us the you know, fixed configuration rather than, you know, more. Uh, yes, there is a way we can hack on it. And the, the question is, is, you know, scheduling a time and getting together and hacking on it. So I propose that on Wednesday mornings, there was a robot happy hour that we continue that and we use that that time to get together and hack on some of these issues in testing with robot and selenium so if you're open to bringing to the forum you know what you've done what you've seen and kind of educating us then we can maybe hack have a hacking session thank you Hi. Uh, if I understand correctly, you tr use the ID from the form to get to tr do your test. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, I'm a commenter from Deluxe, so uh, I'm really I know really how everything, how the architecture how it work. But we might be use uh, the canvas, some web WebGL things, and those things are just rendered. They aren't. They haven't ideas or anything like that, so I wonder how you could uh, test it. I don't know if you understand my question. <laughs> mm, could you repeat it? Yeah. Uh, like, um, if you use, uh, like for the topology, for right now it's use a SVG canvas, so you can find ID to uh, test it and be able to see how node are all links. But if we use like uh, a canvas or a WebGL, it will not be able to find ID because it's just render. So how could you test it if you use that kind of thing? So that's where XPath really helps. Um, and XPath can be a little tricky, but that's, that's kind of where XPath really gives you the, the, the power to find elements on the page. So I, I, would, I would recommend investigating XPath. Um, and that's something else too that you, we can bring and hack on together in a, in a happy hour. Hey, I think um, whatever he asked, uh, I th one of the things that uh, I, I did some testing on the uh, UI part of it, uh, but in a different UI, basically, not Deluxe. Okay. So XPath is a little bit tricky because um, when you change the layout of the uh, page, then your XPath might be corrupted. So I think the best way would be to have IDs 
and uh, with IDs, uh, basically we can, uh, no matter whether the, the I mean, layout changes <laughs> ID, if, if you make sure the ID remains same, then probably filling up that part, clicking that uh, should be fine. And the second thing is, uh, since we are talking about UI, um, rather than doing a rest conf kind of thing, um, uh, you should basically, uh, let's say you, you change some colors on the UI. So there is, there is a way to check whether um, that particular color or uh, thing is highlighted or let's say, you, uh, I mean, one of the things that we did is having links, counting links. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a way, I mean, I'm not sure, but there is a way to um, figure out how many links and how many icons are there on the UI. Because uh, there is a chance that your rest comp might work, but your UI doesn't show that. So uh, such kind of cases can be, uh, uh, I mean, if you are talking about UI testing, basically you should be pure UI testing, not uh, relying on something else other than UI. That's what my my viewpoint is. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, that these are my thoughts. Uh, basically, I don't know if there are, uh, these are questions or not. So when you say pure UI testing, um, could you elaborate a little bit on that versus, you're talking about um, acceptance testing the UI or which is different from maybe like validating the content that you have? Yeah, I mean, basically the UI will make a call, either risk component or whatever is underlying call. Mm -hmm. So testing that is one aspect of it and testing whether it shows that uh, particular thing, whichever is rendering, rendered by the, uh, by the web server is another aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about UI testing, probably it should be pure UI testing. That's what I am, um, my point is, rather than depending on rest con for net con for whatever it is, underlying part of it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just my thought. Uh, uh, so for the link count, what Sri just mentioned about was what we did was um, we had a mini net program and I guess we know how many links it creates. So in the robot test, we're basically making sure that that many links are in the UI. And I think that may be like simple way of testing it. <laughs> and uh, so that way we're ensuring that those links are actually showing up in the UI. Okay. Um, I think, uh, so for the another way to do that maybe, I think if you can actually make a REST call and count the links and verify those what's in the UI, but we're not doing that. We're just hard coding the number of links and testing that. You think that's enough, you said? We can see him. So. Uh, he already, yeah. uh, one really specific test case, and I don't know how easy it would be. Um, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> um, the, there are some browsers where the CPU spikes when we start Deluxe, right? Right. So how can we check against that and fail the test case when the browser's out of control? I, I am not. Did you? I see your hand. I, what, uh, right. So anyways, I mean, we, we run into these issues and we don't file bugs against them, so we should write a test. Yeah. Make it fail. I agree. Yeah, performance testing. 
Just, just connected a little bit of a question for the developers of Deluxe. Uh, I was using the last, last release in Helium, and I found really that this release uh, is, even with the topology only, not with the young UIs as well, that will be put, it's, it's more heavy. Like, if you see the process exactly for the Chrome or the uh, web, as well as for the X uh, process and everything, it's much more than in Helium. So I don't know if there is an explanation, like something has been done this release in terms of development in the, in the Lux itself, so it's more heavy now, uh, run it. And if there is something can be done. <laughs> yeah, uh, I am aware that uh, I already saw that you're uh, talking US. Yeah, Deluxe seems to really have, uh, be uh, heavier, but in this cycle, Deluxe has more trying to uh, uh, improve this uh, modularity with Caraf. But I don't think it's that reason why it's more heavier. I just don't know why it's an, it's an issue that uh, we know and we, we're trying to resolve it for barium. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing else I can say for... I think it's uh, not to interrupt worth asking the developers of Deluxe, what drives the features or improvements or changes? Does the community do that or do you have use cases that you are programming against? Um, how can the community influence Deluxe? Great. Oh, no, no we, have, we have use cases for Ying UI for Ying Visualizers 2, and f we created a new application for GBP project. Uh, it's in alpha, but uh, it came from the guys from the GBP project. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, is, is it community <laughs> or <laughs> use case? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we, uh, the SFC UI drops on our team too, uh, because guys in the SFC team who did it, or one, um, one guy in Slovakia, where, where am I, mm -hmm. uh, did it, and he just left the company. And uh, I don't know if uh, there are a lot of SFC UI developers, so they just gave it to us. So this is the applications we have. And we, we did application for, oh, it's, it's ODL, so yeah. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> okay. okay, so is it the community or or uh, or use case. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so how can we, as integration team, be more intricately intricately involved in deluxe development and testing? Because that's you know it, one of the things that integration and Luz tried to try to do is, with each project you create you have a project with the code you have some tests some integration tests, and we don't have enough members in integration to have them attend each meeting, each project meeting. And so that's kind of the way we, our strategy in trying to get more tests into integration. So how can we be more involved with you to develop more testing? This is what happened. Now, normally uh, we said uh, when we talk about integration, what we are doing and so on, that uh, this release and releases going forward, uh, we like or we prefer projects to do their own system tests. But of course, we are not gonna ask that to see the project if they don't know how to do it. So f we started doing all this scalability performance testing templates a project can reuse to do that kind of testing. And I think for the last is the same. We try to build some framework uh, integration. We are interested to build a framework so that the people that are developer for UI, you can use that framework to easily write test on that. And that is all about, I mean, and to get there, I think mm -hmm. in, we need to gather all together. It's not that yeah. all integration that we gather, you and the intern or myself sometimes, we need to gather developers and people that are gonna build this framework and then, yeah, work together to get that done. 
and uh, that's the thing that uh, we need to get from yeah. this uh, yeah this kind of meeting right yeah exactly so if you actually have regular meetings um, yes we'd love to try to attend them Uh, so one of the things is this uh, JUnit uh, k test cases. Uh, I think it, you should be probably implementing a lot of this uh, JUnit while doing development, right? The what? JUnit. Oh, JUnit. Yeah. Hmm? So basically, unit test cases in any language you uh, write. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, uh, that's another question. No? I think maybe for developers, is mm -hmm. there any unit test that is done or can be done, or is is only this Selenium that can be done too? We did unit tests uh, with the, uh, what is the library, uh, Maxina? Karma and the plugin is uh, Jasmine. Or, yeah, with Jasmine, we, we did some unit tests uh, for, some, uh, for some applications, I think. And uh, we have, uh, pre uh, for example, SFCUI is pretty good covered. Uh, but, uh, Uh, unit tests. Uh, we, we we just wrote unit tests for uh, for the for the JavaScript code, mm -hmm. uh, for the functions and uh, factor factories and, but uh, it doesn't test the forms or the HTML itself or 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 the, that mm, stuff. So uh, you have tested uh, tested all the all the functions there, but uh, that's all, nothing else. Yeah, I think, yeah. That's the thing. This is the first time we try to do some unit tests in the open data, so I think it's the right time to get together, build this framework all together, and then after that, we can gradually hand over to the, initially the LAX, but the way I understand the LAX as well is that they're gonna be projects there's going to be projects developing in the last as well. So if I'm sitting in SSC or GBP or I'm running a project in Open Daylight and I want to have my component in the LAX, I'm going to be going to the LAX and write a component, right? So that's, the, that's the idea. So is that the idea or not? So, so USC uses um, Deluxe Modularity in Lithium. So we actually have um, UI-related code in our USC repository. And then when you install USC in the Carafe console, it uses Deluxe Modularity to put that USC UI into, into Deluxe. And I think we're one of the first projects to, to do that. Um, and out of this session, hopefully, I, uh, we want to be able to test that using robot. Right, like so. If if Deluxe comes in and changes modularity or changes something about their UI, and impacts USC UI, then we want to know about it as a part of continuous integration. Perfect. So this is exactly the sample that yeah. uh, is not only the last developer, but also the projects that they want to have something there. In their, they will be testing using this framework. So that's why it's so important to build this framework in a good way from the beginning. Right. So it seems like that um, Deluxe is is truly a web platform on which we're going to put the different applications that give us the functionality for, let's say, topology, like Topology Manager, Flow Manager, et cetera. So my, uh, one of the things uh, I wanted to, like, since this is um, kind of strategy discussion, is uh, uh, whatever modules uh, user interface uh, has, like, the user interacts with the controller. Or, um, those things uh, needs all of them needs to be tested in the community. That's what I feel because all this jarring feeling that something doesn't work, something makes you frustrated. These things will be eliminated if if we have test cases for them. Uh, that's what I feel like. I truly believe that if we could probably better facilitate answering some of the test the deficits and tests if we had clear test plans publicly on on the wiki so anyone that's interested in participating could go and look ah, okay so this is a test plan for this feature yeah. let me see if I can write some test cases yeah I mean uh, 
one of the things like uh, in in one of the in the US that I was working is uh, basically it's just not like popping up something, showing up something, but uh, basically that thing should go all the way down. Let's say you are doing some flow programming or something. It's basically goes to the end, like make sure that flow goes fine. Yeah. So uh, this is like, uh, that is like much more effort than what actually mm -hmm. looks like. Uh, but that should be addressed. I mean, in case you want to have a better user experience, yeah. uh, that's definitely needs to be taken care of. Yeah, yeah. so more end-to-end -end testing. Yeah, 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 I mean, at least if you can partner, then it is really good. Anyone else? One of the suggestion I have that if your VM, you are running, let's say that you have installed it, the VM, please create a two ETH line, NIC line. Keep the one is the private line for the communication of the your module and other things. And third line, which is the use, will be used for the southbound communication. For example, that we wanted to see the behavior of the web browser alone. So you can launch the web browser anywhere other than the, your, you know, where it is, right? Uh, for example, that I have a running lithium. I don't want to touch that one because it will pick the CPU. Mm -hmm. So you put the your web browser somewhere else, other machine, and do the, your work on that one, you can install your, you know, a Selenium, you can do all those things, right? And you can you, know, you can see that how that one is behaved. So one of the way you can see the performance of the web browser, that how that one works. So this is one of the suggestion I have uh, for all of you. And Jamal says we're already doing that. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion. So we have about uh, three and a half minutes left. Yeah, looks like we're pretty cooked. No, I think it's, uh, okay. we just need, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, Carol, can get the names of the people and the mails. So to build this framework, like developers, it's very important to, to gather together. So that would be awesome. All right, I'm going to lock the door. You can't leave unless you give me your email. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for participating. Um, Deluxe has always been that chasm of, you know, feature that or product that we haven't tested. There's been some trepidation around testing it. Um, and now I think we've kind of opened that door and broke, broken that wall down. So please give us more suggestions. Email us. Let us know what we can do and how we can help you. Thank you again. Good morning, everyone. Basically, we are here to discuss about the UI testing using robot and Selenium to library. So currently in the lithium version, we don't have any test that could uh, show that whether the deluxe is up and we have the Wang UI modules up or not. So this is uh, just to um, create tests using robot and Selenium to library uh, to show first to check whether the topology is up or not or whether the Wang UI modules are up or not. And uh, so the agenda here is first I would be giving you an introduction what was the scope of the project, what has been reached and how I started. Then we would be discussing with the features that the community wants to be tested and would like to see in the beryllium version, right? So after a few minutes, I just give you the introduction. Carol is going to lead. And uh, so the introduction of this project, so basically the first, the scope of the project was first to test the Netcoff actions that are being processed via Wang UI, but later on we thought that the community wants to test the Deluxe API service as a whole. So first, we the goal of this project now is to create test suits that can test the user interface and the Wang UI interface that are being exposed via Deluxe service. 
right? So uh, I got three VMs from the Spartan Labs, where in first VM, I installed the Open Daylight controller. The configuration of the VM is something around four cores and eight GB RAM. Two of the VMs are running CentOS, and one VM is Ubuntu 14. So on the CentOS VM, I am running controller. And the other CentOS VM, I have robot framework and the, my development setup to push, pull, and commit code. And on the Ubuntu VM, I have Mininet installed. So after that, learning about all these things and setting up the environment directly, I uh, tested the present test case to become more familiar with the robot framework and how the testing procedure goes. Then we have got the Selenium 2 library. So I learned about the Selenium 2 library and the various keywords that are being used. So after that, I got started creating with the test suits for testing the UI features. And we have got one basic test suit just to test whether the Deluxe shows on a specified URL and the user is able to log in properly with admin admin. So what is actually Selenium 2 library? It is a web testing framework for robot, right? And it uses Selenium 2 web driver for internally to control a web browser. So it actually runs in a real browser instance and Wang UI and in lithium version, we also got the Wang visualizer part. So the basic test suite we have now is just, it shows that the Deluxe service is up or not, and whether the user is able to log in properly or not. So after that, now we are uh, proceeding further to seek the community um, uh, what features you would like to have first, and is there any priority among the features that you would like to test first? So I think now it's time to for the discussion, and Carol is going to lead the discussion and discuss with you regarding the features. So I request Carol to please come and lead the discussion. Thank you. Testing, okay. So thank you, Nitin, for your um, introduction and to the testing that we're starting to do with Deluxe. Um, show of hands, how many have loaded Deluxe, played with it, do you use it in testing at all? Good. What would you say um, is the first place you go with the most popular um, application you use? when you open Deluxe? Uh, it can be used with both Python and Jython. So this link is actually a good reference point for the Selenium 2 library, and it has all the, it is a good resource, and all the parameters and keywords are mentioned, how to use it, how to import, everything. So first of all, Selenium 2 library, we installed it publicly in the Jenkins. So this is the way we have installed, and uh, in the Jenkins, built Relang. So this is the user interface that I'm going to discuss. The UI opens at localhost 8181 port and index.html. Please note that it has changed in lithium version. Uh, before in Helium it was slash deluxe slash index.html. So this slide has been pulled from the ODL operations guide, which Lewis gave on Monday. And that was actually a good reference point for the new beginners, and it has all the things that I did. So installing Mininet, robot code, and ODL controller, troubleshooting the issues, Postman, RESTConf, and REST URLs. So this is that we want to test. So this is the UI, actually, right? So we, after login, we would like to discuss with the community, say, which features you would like to test first, right? Uh, so topology part, nodes part, 
So it, this test will ensure whether the Delux is up or not. So we have the test running in the Jenkins so that we can, whether the Delux goes down or the URL is not opening so that it can, and we will process some modules so that the, we can identify, the developer can identify whether the Delux service is up or not. So this project is being mentored by Carol and Lewis is also there in the discussions and everything. So, so basically, sorry I forgot to mention my introduction. I'm working as an Open Daylight intern with the Linux Foundation and my name is Nitin Agarwal. So how I actually got started, so first of all, I when learned about what is SGN and what is software defined networking, how, what are the technologies. Then I learned about open daylight. So the architecture of open daylight, what is the controller, what is north mount, south mount, the open flow protocol, open vSwitch. And then I tried to get the VMs from the community and then I tried to install open daylight controller and play around with it. So after that, we had uh, there some wiki pages which are a good reference point for the new beginners to come and see how to install the features, troubleshoot the issues. And there is a IRC channel where we can actually ping any of the developer to ask the issues. 